Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Peter and welcome to another tutorial. This time we're going to build a, an ASP.NET website, we're going to buy a domain name, we're going to get a, a VPS and we're going to have our um, server hosted and it's going to be uh, publicly available. So by the end of this video, you should hopefully have something like this, right? Basically your own domain name, uh, your own C Sharp website. Um, publicly accessible and with a with an HTTPS um, connection. So we're going to have a certificate from Let's Encrypt as well. Now, this is part of an ongoing series in this very first video. Let's just like get a thing like let's just, hey, create a new project, get it up and running just so we have something to show for this. Now, another thing is if you have any question, if you get stuck, um, don't uh, hesitate and visit our Discord server. Uh, you can find it at spellos.net forward slash discord. Uh, that's an invite link. Now, um, once you're there, you can we, we're going to figure out whatever might go wrong for you, but hopefully nothing goes wrong. And once you have something uh, pretty cool set up, uh, once you have your website public, go into this uh, your ASP net core section under discuss and post a link to it because we would really love to uh, check it all out. Um, and of course, you could check out uh, other people's uh, creations as well. All right, with that fluff uh, over and done, let's actually talk cost. Uh, this is not going to be completely free. Of course, we need to buy a domain and we need to buy a VPS. However, uh, the domain is going to cost us uh, probably less than $2, and the VPS cost is going to be ideally around $2.5 a month, which is as low as I could get it. I was really trying to get it really cheap for you guys. Um, but you know, that's if you know a cheaper variant, definitely let us know in the comments because we can probably take it down a little bit for like a dollar, I think. All right. Well, so first of all, number one, some requirements. We are going to need Visual Studio. Uh, you can, of course, get a Visual, oops, Visual Studio download. Probably going to find it. It's visualstudio.microsoft.com forward slash download. Uh, here, I would recommend this community version is free. Um, now, once you install it, it's going to ask you for, or if you already have Visual Studio installed, you find an installer. It's Visual Studio Installer. Open that up. Um, and hit modify next to your uh, installed instance. If you're installing it for the first time, you're going to see this uh, anyways. So you don't have to click anything. And the things that we are interested in uh, is our ASP.NET and web development. Just to be sure, .NET Core cross-platform development. It's gonna be, it's gonna um, add up to about eight gigs of uh, space at least at the time of recording. So that's the requirements. We need to have that. Uh, I assume that you're on Windows 10. If you're on Linux, um, that's actually really great, but uh, you can probably figure it out if you're on Linux. Um, now, the next thing is we need a domain name. And there's plenty of different domain registrars where you can uh, buy, when you can purchase a domain. It's usually bought uh, for like a year. And uh, there are some big registrars like domain.com, but uh, I would actually recommend you go to um, go to Namecheap, Namecheap.com. You can uh, if you just go to their website. There's like a here's just here is where you type in what you would like your domain to be. Um, they have a couple of options. Uh, obviously, if you go for the standard ones, uh, you can see that for example, .dev uh, is like fifteen dollars, but it's not. It's not all right for us. What we want, uh, just click this this little explore more button and then hit the two dollars or less. Uh, unless you, if you have a, you know, bigger budget and you really want like a, a different domain name, then yeah, by all means. Uh, but if you look at it, there's like some really, really cheap domains like Drexis.club uh, is, for example, uh, you know, $1.6. That's pretty good. Um, and, and some of them are actually kind of cool, I would say. .life, .live, you know, .top. 
some of that dot fun, right? So pick your uh, pick your XYZ. XYZ is a common and very cheap one. You can see it's a, it's just for a dollar, right? Um, now just pick whichever you want. Um, add it to the cart. Pay. Uh, you can you can pay with uh, PayPal if you have that, or if you have a credit card, you could you could use that obviously. Um, once you have your domain name. Uh, we're going to need a server. We, we're going to need a web server. Um, this is basically a... Uh, we're going to have a server running somewhere. Uh, we don't really care about the location. Uh, which is going to hold our C-sharp application that's going to respond to all of the, all of the web requests. And uh, the VPS provider of choice for me is Vulture. Uh, it's V-U-L-T-R dot com where you can get um, pretty cheap, uh, pretty cheap servers. Now, Vul Vulture works um, this way. You can basically get, you know, get some cash into your a Vulture account. So for example, let's say you, you send, you, you kind of like using again either paypal credit card doesn't matter maybe you you put like five dollars into your vulture account and then that cash is being slowly used up by your server and uh the thing is it still respects the cost. it tells you like what the cost is going to be it's not like you know you can suddenly just like get insane uh insane costs out of nowhere it respects that sort of a sort of a limit but you know Again, well, we're going to talk about that in just a second, but make a Vulture account as well. Um, get some cash onto it. Um, and, and at that point, that, that's going to be it, right? So now we need to create a server on Vulture. So if you're on Vulture, if you're in, in your own account, you can go into products. All right, after logging in, you can hit the little plus button and let's uh, click deploy new server. And we're going to pick again. So I'm going to pick cloud compute, uh, the location, because this is going to, your, your prices are going to differ based on the location, right? So I am going to pick, um, let's say LA. Um, let's go. Uh, if you, if you pick us places, then, uh, they're going to be cheaper at least at the time of recording, but you can, we can, you know, check that out uh, later on. The next thing we're going to pick uh, Debian for the server type. We're going to pick uh, Debian 10, 64 bit. And you can see that here, here are the different, uh, different options. You can see that actually that wasn't, that wasn't a good, good choice because the uh, cheapest one is, is $5 actually like pretty sure we could find uh, one where it's going to be, yeah, there you go. Hell, like ah uh, five, so we could probably get it even cheaper. Oop, that's cheaper. That's, uh, we're looking. We're we're looking for the first, uh, the the smallest server site uh, that is not IPv6 only. So we're actually looking uh, like at this one, right? Three point five. I think that's understandable. Can we? Now that's way too expensive. Uh, Ten dollars. I think three point was uh, three point. Um, Phi was like a pretty yeah, alright. So let's just pick New York. Uh we're gonna have three point three point five dollars a month. That's pretty good. We get one CPU, we get five hundred and twelve uh, megs of memory and five hundred gig gigs of bandwidth, which is perfectly like reasonable for the size of like a basic ASP.NET uh, application that we're just gonna run, right? So to summarize the options, it's cloud compute, New York, in my case, Debian 10 64 bit. Uh, the the case uh, sorry the the plan of uh, three point five dollars a month. We're going to check enable IPv six because uh, well we want to have it uh, ready for that. Um, and I have already an SSH key here. You don't have to forget about it. Uh, don't, you don't you don't have to you don't have to add it. Uh, just leave it empty for you. All right. Now the next thing we we need uh, is a, a server hostname and 
by proxy a label just come up with something interesting it's just like the name for your server really it's not like it's not like your, it's not your domain it's just like a random name that you give it um i'm gonna call mine draxis just because why not because drax actually let's because i promoted draxis because draxis is a another uh is a staff member on my discord so actually let's this time let's promote lamoro the the other administrator on my discord server all right so once we have that let's just deploy that real quick Boop, hit that deploy button now uh lamoro is going to install over here now we don't get any like initial charges it actually you get charged you know by usage so as it is uh currently installing we are going to do a couple of things uh thing number one is we need to get an ssh key we're going to generate an ssh key which is basically going to be a thing that we use to connect to our server uh without providing a password because passwords are clunky and prone to you know uh different attacks so i'm going to open you should if you're just like randomly on windows you should probably open powershell uh, however, PowerShell, like as you can see, is like really tiny. So I'm gonna actually use the new Windows terminal. It's ju it just looks different, but if you notice, it is PowerShell, right? So there should be no difference for you, right? I just use it because you can like uh, I can zoom in and out, you know. And I would like you guys to actually see what is going on. Now, uh, another thing I forgot to kind of mention, I created a um, dev folder directly in my c drive just so if i need to provide a path at any point it's going to be short well so the first thing we need to do is generate an ssh key right and we do that with a very simple command and that's ssh dash key gen key gen right hit enter it's gonna be like all right hey uh where do you want to file when, when where do you want to save the file we're going to leave it in the default directory which is uh users your username dot ssh idrsa i'm just going to hit enter uh we can create a passphrase i would recommend that you probably should come up with a passphrase i'm just going to leave it empty for for now i'm just going to hit enter and enter again you get like a random art don't worry about that we can just type in clear after that hit enter and be done with that now we have an ssh key now let's get back to our uh, uh, vulture dashboard and you can see that uh, our, our lamoro uh, server has already uh, been created right you can see that the cost is 0 0.01 dollars at this point well so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to uh, the server details and where we are interested in two things one of them is the IP address of the server. And then in uh, pretty sure settings, IPv6, uh, the IPv6 address. So just those two things here. You can go into settings and then IPv4, this address, the main IP, and then the IPv6 address. Those are what we're uh, interested in at this point. Now, um, I'm going to do what's called a pro gamer move at this point. Because um, first of all, I'm going to go to my uh, Namecheap dashboard where I, I bought, by the way, I bought like a, I bought a domain called peter.rest. And I just like, I'm going to scrap it after this story. I'm not going to like really keep it. And it was dirt cheap. I'm like peter.rest. Pretty cool. I'm going to rest. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to... I basically just uh, went to my domain list on Namecheap. I just uh, went under manage and uh, under advanced DNS, uh, I get into this dialogue. Now, keep in mind that if you have a different registrar, um, you may um, have it slightly different. For example, on domain uh, dot com you have to go to like uh, your, your uh, dashboard and then go under DNS and name servers. So we need to do two things. We need to set up an, uh, well, three things. We need to set up an A record, a uh, quad A record, and a C name record um, so that um, when you type in peter.rest, it points um, to the IP of the server so that the server can respond. So now we need to edit the, the Namecheap DNS entries um, so that they look like this. 
basically what this means is there are two for host there are two different things we have either an at symbol or dub 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 um at symbol means root uh which means just your domain name that's like peter.rest literally peter.rest um dub 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 of course means www.peter.rest and so what we're doing here is that hey if you enter www.peter.rest we will redirect you basically to it's the same thing as just typing peter.rest and typing peter.rest um is going to be uh, equivalent to the at here which means that it will point you to either the ipv4 or ipv6 address now keep in mind that for the c name on uh, namecheap.com for the c name record you have to it has to end with uh with a dot here right that's just kind of what it forces you to do uh i set the time to live for everything uh to just a minute however we still need to wait for the the domain uh, for, for the DNS records to propagate and so uh, meanwhile we're going to set up our ASP.NET website all right so what we're going to do is I'm just going to open Visual Studio installer and once we have that I am going to make sure that there are no updates but there if there are updates I would update and then launch Visual Studio so let's open up Visual Studio and create a new project now the project is going to be ASP.NET Core Web Application. I'm going to hit next. Uh, the project name is going to be Peter. I call it by my name randomly. I don't really care. And the location for me is just going to be like under C dev. As I said, I made a new folder under C. You can put it wherever you want. Just remember where it is. And then we're going to hit create and we're going to, uh, of course, we need to pick a front end. Um, let us use the web application model view controller, um, configure for HTTPS, and let's actually leave it as it is. We're not going to use Angular, uh, React, or anything. You could if you really wanted to or are familiar with, with these uh, JavaScript frameworks. But if, you, if you're just following the story, you have no idea. We're going to talk about different, uh, what, you know, different things like APIs and, and different uh, front ends. Uh, in future videos now our goal is just to get something up and running and then we can slowly work on it and make it better all right so we're just going to create that uh, this is going to take a while to get the template up and running and then we're also going to make a couple of changes to the default project so first of all let's go into startup.cs over there and let's edit this file a little bit because what we need to do this is basically taken from uh microsoft's documentation on how to actually deploy asp.net on a web server what we need to do is in startup.cs under configure we need to add a new thing here right uh at the beginning and the thing that we need to do uh, that we need to implement is uh forwarding for for http headers or headers in general right um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use, we're going to say app dot, uh, use forwarded headers. Yep. Use forward, use forwarded headers. It takes in a, uh, ooh, it doesn't, yeah, it takes in a forwarded headers option. So we're going to make a new forwarded headers options and we're going to use the simplified construction to, or the simplified object initialization or something like that. Uh, to set one property and that's forwarded headers forwarded headers and what we're going to do is we're actually going to uh, use forwarded headers which should actually can we add that as a as a using directive I'm just going to right click using Microsoft ASP.NET Core HTTP overrides that's exactly it and we're going to use the uh, x forwarded for option and uh, forwarded headers. So add a, add a line, this this line there. Uh, and uh, let's use the proto as well. Right. So this is basically what we need to what we need to add. 
Uh, it's just it's just so that uh, HTTP as headers, if I understand it correctly, get forwarded into our application properly or into Kestrel uh, properly. Uh, you don't have to really understand this. This is like this is something that we'll probably delve into in further in in future tutorials. At this point, it's just like a magical thing that we have to do to get things up and running, and then then we can figure. Uh, out some simpler stuff. Now that was uh, that took a a lot of mental effort. So let's actually do something that is fun for a change. So let's just go into views, uh, home, and index.cshtml. Let's open index.html, and this is just an HTML uh, page that says welcome. And it says learn about building web apps with ASP.NET Core. So we're what we're gonna do uh, is I'm gonna change this to hello world and i'm gonna write a little i'm gonna change this p tag to this is my very own cool website yay right like have something have something creative something interesting we're going to talk more about how to you know how to do different cool stuff with html at the very end of this tutorial just so uh, the people that are familiar with html and css don't really hate me as much for uh, wasting time. Uh, but for now, change it to something fun, you know, interesting. And then let's test it. Let's actually run the application. Uh, you can run it with IIS at this point. Uh, hit the hit the little run button. It's going to open your browser and uh, you're going to see what the website is going to look like. In this case, if it asks you for, uh, for SSL certificate trust, let's just say yes. Let's just hit yes again doesn't matter you do it once per machine and if your browser freaks out hit advance and hit accept the risk and continue it's just because we do not have a uh, trusted um, SSL certificate at this point but we are going to have it on our server and as you can see here it is hello world this is my very own cool website we have different pages we have privacy and home that's it right that's our website so that's pretty cool uh, we have it up and running. That's what we are going to need. Now, once we now that we have this, right, we are going to test if um, I can I can actually close the actually I'm gonna minimize it for now. Uh, if I check out, yeah, we do. Okay. Now I'm just checking out that my project is truly there. My project is in dev Peter. That's where my uh, ASP.NET project is. Uh, located. So now what we need to do is now we need to double check that uh, the domain is actually that the DNS record is properly uh, forwarded. So we're going to do ping peter.rest and you can see that it actually points to this IP address which is the IP address of uh, my server of Lamoro. Um, so that's great. That works. We could also try dub 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 peter rest which does work and it points to the the uh, IP of the server as well. Now, if it doesn't, if it says something like, oh, like not found or not, you know, it can't connect, whatever, give it some time. For me, it genuinely took uh, a couple of minutes to uh, to to propagate. Um, don't freak out. And if you still, if it's been like, if it's been more than a day and it still hasn't uh, propagated, then contact us or on, on our Discord server. We'll try to see what, uh, what goes wrong. But hopefully you should get that uh, connected. Now, Beautiful. Now we've got that set up. So now that we have that, we can actually uh, connect to to our server and set up the um, set up the website, right? Set up the server. So first of all, we're going to SSH, which is basically connecting to it um, through a command line. And to do that, we're just going to type in SSH and space. Uh, and we're going to type in root at and our domain name for me, peter.rest. Root at peter.rest. Of course, it, you should use your domain. I think it's clear at this point. Um, all right, we're going to do that. And it's going to be like, well, first of all, do you want to trust that? It's like, let's say yes. And then it's going to ask for a password. Now you can find your root password in um, overview password here. I'm just going to copy. And then I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to say, oops, I'm going to just, I think I typed uh, accident, I some, typed something accident. I'm just hit control V and hit enter. Uh, if it look, sometimes it's not going to show the password, by the way, uh, in, in console. So 
if you like can't do it, right? It just like tells you that it's wrong password. Maybe you will have to actually type it manually. Uh, I don't know if PowerShell can paste properly. I know the new Windows terminal, this one that I'm using, it can paste properly. If PowerShell cannot paste, you might have to type it in manually. All right, but now we're going to be on a Linux machine. So we can type in clear. And so you can see that you're on the, you're actually now connected to the server because it says root at name of your server for me is Lamoro. So what we're going to do here is we need to set up a couple of things. So first thing is we want to make sure that we don't actually log in with a, uh, with a password, but instead we log in with an uh, SSH key, the key that we generated at the very beginning, almost very beginning. So I'm going to open a new, uh, term. Actually, screw it. Let's just type in, let's just type in exit to exit out of that server. So we logged out and now I'm back in my local machine here. Uh, and so what we're going to do is go to your user uh, user folder, which is for me, so I'm going to type in CD to change directory and I'm going to go to C uh, forward slash, I'm pretty sure. Nope. That's uh, C uh, users. Yep. Uh, you can use, by the way, you can do, do C column slash U, capital U and press tab for auto autocomplete auto completes users. I'm going to type in my username, which is just user uh, and dot SSH, right? So this is the path that I want to do. Of course, this should be your username on your Windows machine locally and make sure that you're not doing this on the server. You need to do this on your local machine. That's why we did exit before, right? So we're going to hit enter. That's that moves us into this SSH folder. And if we do LS here, uh, which lists what's in that folder, um, in that directory, you're going to see that we have ID RSA and ID RSA pub. That's these combined in a way, uh, are basically our SSH key, right? This is the public part of our SSH key, which whatever. So now we need to add that key to our server. All right, so in order to copy that SSH key to our server, we need to use this giant command. I thought we would have SSH copy ID. It turns out Windows doesn't have it by default, so that kind of uh, messed me up a little bit, but we can do it with this uh, this command over here. So we basically uh, just can't, uh, ba we basically take the contents of that, of that public uh, SSH key and pipe it into SSHing into our machine and then making a directory uh, called SSH and then outputting um, that 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 contents of that file into authorized keys. Uh, you don't need to understand what it really like does. It copies the the SSH key to to a list of authorized keys that you know can be used on the server. So for for us, it's cat dot backslash id rsa bub what you can do here if you're typing it you just type in cat and then you say id underscore rsa dot and hit like a tab and it auto fills right even with the dot backslash right you don't need to really like type that and then you you put a put a line there ssh root at again peter.rest for you your domain and then double quotes mkdir tilde this is a this is a tilde you know, you can probably find how to type tilde, I'm pretty sure you're smart. Forward slash dot SSH, uh, semicolon, space, cat, space, more than, more than, you know, just uh, forward that into uh, tilde, forward slash SSH, forward slash authorized keys, and then double quotes again. Uh, let's run that. It's going to ask for the pass password again. Uh, so I'm just going to, again, copy the password because I'm pretty sure I lost it. Again, paste that. Boop. And uh, that's it. It did something. Now, the thing is, um, if you failed the password authentication, you want to retype, you want, you're like, oh, I need to retype the whole thing. No, you can press up uh, to get the command, the whole command back if you, if you need to. Uh, but of course, for us, it, uh, I'm pretty sure it worked. So uh, once we actually copy that, what we can do is, um, we can actually SSH into into the the VPS uh, into our server without a password this time. So ideally, if I do SSH root at peter.rest, 
it ideally won't require me to put in a password. And you see it, that it didn't because it actually took the uh, the SSH key. If it still requires you to put in a password, um, you probably did something wrong. And I, again, would recommend that you get you, you check out uh, our Discord server and ask ask around. We're going to figure out what you what you did wrong. Um, again, the Discord server is spellos.net forward slash Discord. All right. So now once we are on the server again, I'm just going to type in clear to make it clear. Funny. Uh, root at Lamoro for me. Um, we need to do a couple of things. We're going to use nano to edit um, Etsy SSH SSHD config. Now, we're going to hit that. It opens this editor. This is nano. This is an editor called nano. You can use arrow keys to move around. Um, and we need to edit a couple of things in here. So first of all, we're going to need to also find a couple of things. Uh, the first thing we want to want to do is disable pa password authentication. First of all, make sure that you can actually log into your server without a password first. It cannot ask you for a password. If you're just brushing it off as like, ah, I'll just use a password. If you disable pos password ath authentication here, you're not going to be able to get into your server. You will have to delete it on Vulture and create it again. Uh, that's a shame. Don't do that. So make sure that you can, you can SSH into the server without a Pass, uh, without a password, with just the, the SSH key. All right, so, um, which by the way, after we copied the SSH key, just to make it clear, you no longer need to do anything. You just do SSH root at your domain. That's it, always. You just never do anything else at this point. All right, so first thing first is let's find password authentication. So we're going to press Control W. Uh, which opens a uh, search there. I'm going to type in password auth, password auth, capital P, capital A. I'm going to hit enter. It moves me here to password authentication. Yes. I'm going to first delete the, the hashtag, the pound symbol in front of that. Then I'm going to move to yes. And I'm going to change it to no. I don't want password authentication. The next thing that we want to edit is um, uh, usage of PAM or PAM. So what we're going to do again, control W, uh, let's type in use PAM, hit enter, it moves us here, use PAM, yes. Uh, you can read, by the way, the comments above it to figure out what it is. Uh, let's say no, we do not want PAM. Now, again, in the last thing, let's control W to search for something and let's search for challenge response um off just to be clear enter there it is challenge response authentication is to no which is good that is that it's supposed to be no for us good so now we're going to press control x and it's going to be like hey save modified buffer do you want to save your changes let's type in yes uh, I pressed uh, capital Y. Now the file name to write, I'm just going to leave it as it is. So I'm just going to hit enter and that changes it, right? That writes the changes. Uh, what we need to do, however, is uh, restart SSH, uh, restart the, uh, the SSHD. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in system CTL restart SSH D. Right? System CTL restart SSH D. Once we do that, if you try to if you try to authenticate, um, if you try to do SSH root at peter.rest uh, from a different machine that does not have this SSH key, it's just gonna it's not gonna ask you for a password, it's just gonna say permission denied, public key, which it did for me. So I tested it on a different uh, on a different uh, machine right now. I would recommend you to test it on a different machine. You don't want to like you know accidentally leave the password authentication in. Now the next thing is um, the 
update upgrade. So let's get back into our into our uh, into our server. So again, make sure that you have root at uh, your server, and we're gonna do apt update, which is gonna update uh, the repositories, and apt upgrade, which is going to upgrade um, all of the packages. Now. Everything else is up to date, which is good. You you wanna you wanna make sure that you do that basically before you install uh, a lot of other things. So the first thing that we want to do is install .NET on our server. So we're just gonna go uh, to .NET. Uh, we're gonna hit download. We're gonna hit all .NET Core downloads. We're gonna select the latest uh, non-preview version. So it's the LTS one. This one is gonna be available until uh, twenty. Uh, 2022, right? So we have two years until we have to upgrade to a newer .NET version. All right, so I'm going to click this one. I'm going to select, uh, because our, our server is running Linux, I'm going to select Linux uh, Package Manager Instructions. Here, it, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to scroll down to Debian because our server is running Debian and it's running Debian 10. So we're going to hit this and it gives us these instructions. Now, we need to follow those basically exactly, so I'm just going to copy this one, copy the wget one. Uh, let's get back into our server, paste that in, hit enter, which downloads the, the, the deb package. Now we're going to use the dpkg to install that package. So again, I'm going to copy this, this command, go back to the server, paste in, hit enter, that set up all of the appropriate keys. And now we're installing the .NET SDK. I'm not going to use their commands. There are like, I really kind of don't like, I know that it's like a single command. You don't have to do much, but I like to have a little bit more control over this. So I'm just going to do it like manually, but we're going to take a look at what we're doing here. So let's clear it. And let's say first, they want us to apt update. So we're going to do apt update. Good. So that's good. All right, clear. Um, the next thing is installing apt transport HTTPS. So we're going to do apt uh, install apt transport HTTPS. We're going to do that. That's good. That's in, that installed uh, properly. Now we're going to clear that again. Uh, they want us to apt update one more time. Sure. Let's do that just to be sure. And then let's um, apt install .NET SDK 3.1. In my case, you know, make sure you check out the actual command, right? It says 3.1 here. So we're going to do that. And it asks us if we want to install. I'm going to say yes. Why? And hit enter. You could also, I think, just hit enter. I'm pretty sure. It's pretty good. Uh, Gonna wait till .NET installs. Okay, so now we have .NET installed. Uh, we don't need this guide anymore. Uh, we can verify that .NET is installed properly by typing in .NET dash dash version, which outputs the version of .NET, which is great. So that works. Um, now that we have uh, .NET, we need to install a couple of uh, other things. So we're going to do apt install and the things that we need to install, uh, we need Nginx, Nginx, um, which you spell N-G-I-N-X. Um, we also need cert bot, C-E-R-T-B-O-T. -E uh, and we also need Python cert bot Nginx. So Python dash cert bot dash Nginx. This is what we need to install. Uh, let's get that go. Oh, sorry. App, apt apt install. Make sure that's a thing. And then capital Y to install. Let's see. Let's get let's get that running. Okay. So after that's installed, I'm just gonna clear it. So uh, now that we have nginx nginx um, all the dependencies uh, installed, now we need to we're gonna configure uh, our nginx. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to copy a uh, default thing from a default config from a etc from forward slash etc uh, engine x 
Um, again, you can press tab to autocomplete. Sites um, available um, default. We're going to copy it into, well, etc. So Etsy, Engine, Nginx, um, Sites, Available, and then give it a name for, for the application. I mean, for me, it was like Peter. So let's just name of the application for me is just going to be Peter. For You could be like my website, it could be like your name. It could be the, the name. It doesn't have to be the domain name, right? It's coincidental that it's the domain uh, name. But for me, it's just, I just name it Peter, whatever. You can name it Bear. I don't care. Oh, that's funny. This rhymes. So I'm going to copy that. And then we're going to edit that file. So we're going to edit etc. nginx sites available Peter. And as you can see, it has a lot of comments over here. We could probably delete uh, all of these uh, comments. All right. So I just removed all of the comments, all of the blue lines, all of the lines with, uh, you know, with with hashtags or pound in front of them. Um, and so we we need to change a couple of things. So first of all, um, we are going to leave this here. So we're going to remove the default server here because actually we're going to have a server of our own. Um, so remove these uh, the default server from, from these two lines. Uh, we are also going to remove this line because we don't care about the root and we also don't care about these index files. So we're going to remove this line as well. Now, the next thing is the server name. We need to actually put in the domain names that, uh, that we have registered. So we're going to put in, uh, I'm going to put in peter.rest and dub, 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 peter rest, right? www.peter.rest. Uh, so have it like this with your domain name, obviously. Uh, and then we're going to edit the, the location and uh, the location will be, uh, oof, that will be, this is again, uh, a part of, uh, something that was basically in, uh, it's in the Microsoft documentation. Um, so we have to kind of like copy it verbatim. So basically let's just, uh, let's just get done with it. Proxy pass, um, HTTP for uh, HTTP uh, HTTP com slash slash local host uh, port 5000. This is where our app, where our ASP.NET application is going to be running on this machine. Um, the next thing is proxy HTTP version. Actually, let's, uh, let's just put in like spaces to like align this uh, 1.1. The next thing is uh, proxy set header uh, upgrade dollar sign uh, HTTP underscore upgrade. Uh, the next setting is again proxy set. Oops, proxy set header. Another. Need to set another header. Uh, this time connection keep alive. Next thing would be proxy set header, oops, header uh, host, dollar sign host. Make sure to put semicolons at the end of these, of course. Proxy, uh, the next one is going to be proxy cache bypass, dollar uh, sign HTTP underscore upgrade. Uh, the next one is proxy set header uh, x dash forwarded for uh, dollar sign proxy add x forwarded for and then one more header proxy set header x forwarded pr uh, proto if you remember, oh, hold up, uh, door sign scheme. If you remember these, uh, the, the forwarded for and forwarded proto, we actually set up in the ASP.NET application so that it can uh, interpret these. All right, so that, that would be the location. Um, 
let's just double check it real quick. So we have a server that listens on port 80. Uh, the server name is peter.rest or www.peter.rest. Uh, we have a location and we have proxy pass uh, for HTTP uh, localhost 5000. We also have a proxy HTTP version 1.1 and we have a couple of headers. Um, the headers are upgrade, HTTP upgrade, connection, keep alive, a host, host. Uh, we also have a cache bypass for HTTP upgrade. And uh, we have the X4 rooted 4 and X4 rooted proto headers as well. Okay, that's really good. So now when we have that, I'm going to hit control X. Uh, do you want to save the modified buffer? I'm going to hit, say yes. Uh, it's going to ask me, hey, is this the file? I'm going to hit enter because yes. Uh, I can also, I'm not sure, engine X uh, sites available beater. I can cat it to see it. It's like, yes, it's, that's exactly what I typed in. Anyways, uh, so now that we have that, we're going to make a link for enabled, uh, for, for the enabled website. So we're going to type in ln uh, dash s forward slash Etsy engine X sites available. Peter or your, you know, obviously the, your name, whatever you put in there. Uh, it's the same file that we edited in, in just just a second ago. And we're going to copy it into Etsy, Nginx, Sites, Enabled this time. And that's it. I'm going to hit enter. Pretty good. Now we're going to make a directory uh, in var dub dub dub. Um, Pete, uh, I'm going to call it Peter, um, which is going to be uh, where our ASP.NET application is going to be. It's what, that's where it's going to reside. Um, so we're going to make that directory. The next thing is what we're going to do is system CTL reload engine X, which is going to apply the changes that we that we just uh, did. The next thing is we're going to uh, generate, um, we're going to generate our HTTPS certificate. So what we're going to do is we're going to do cert bot dash dash engine X. Uh, we're going to enter. This one is going to be like, hey, what's your email address? I'm going to put in, the, let's say, uh, let's say my email address. Then uh, we're going to agree with the terms of service. These are good terms of service. Uh, we're not going to allow them to use our email, though, or list it anywhere. Uh, then we're going to, we want to... Uh, enable HTTP for both one and two. So we're going to type in one space two for both of these uh, domains. So we're going to hit enter. Um, then what we're going to do is we're there. It should ask us uh, after th this takes a little bit. Uh, so it takes a little while, but after that, it should ask us about redirects. I'm pretty sure. So we're going to wait for verification. All right, and so it asks us if we want to redirect. So we're going to type in two for redirect, hit enter, and that is it, right? So now we, they, they basically uh, the cert bot actually set up uh, our HTTPS certificates. Now, now what we need to do is uh, we're going to set up automatic renewal of our certificate so that it automatically renews. I mean, uh, let, let's use cron tab uh, dash e. It's gonna actually, uh, yeah, cron, oh uh, yeah, and we're gonna choose one for nano. Okay, now in cron tab, we're just going to move all the way down and we're gonna add one space, one space, one space, uh, star space, star, cert bot renew. That's it, which basically means every month uh, run cert bot renew. I'm going to hit control X, Y, enter. Yep, good. Um, that's pretty good. And so now what we need to do is actually run our um, a copy over, deploy, copy over, and run our uh, ASP.NET 
application. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to exit out of the server first. We're going to, I'm going to CD into where my uh, .NET project is. In my case, it's cdev. It's wherever your, your Visual Studio project is, right? If you don't know, you can right click your project, which is the not the purple solution. Also, yeah, actually, you could even do it on the solution and hit open folder in File Explorer. It's going to show you where it is. If you click here, it's going to show you the path, right? Which, honestly, I'm just going to do. But we need the path to do the project itself, really. So I'm just going to do kind of that. And um, now, if we go, if we go there, we do CD into that directory. Uh, what we can do is we can deploy uh, or build this application for for deployment. So what we need to do is we need to build it, uh, deploy it, or publish it. Sorry for uh, Linux. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say .NET publish. So it's .NET publish release for Linux. However, we're gonna add self-contained false. Um, self-contained basically means if it should include like the .NET runtime. It's like well, don't actually, right? So we're gonna run that. After you do that, you again go CD into this directory. Uh, all right, well now we have, this is basically our, our application ready for deployment. This is what we need to get uh, on the server. So first of all, we are going to CD into that directory. We're gonna CD into basically this directory. So we're gonna do CD there. And we're gonna clear because I'm already uh, going crazy from how many things are on my screen. And now, if I do ls, I should see all of these things like uh, the name of my application.dll, right? Like that's great. I also see the www root uh, directory. So we're gonna use something called SCP. SCP is a uh, it's a it's a file transfer protocol, really, for through uh, through SSH. It's not a protocol. It's like a utility that helps you. Um, so basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do SCP space. Uh, I'm pretty sure we do dash R for recursive. Then it's the it's the what we want to send to the server, which is everything. So it's just a star, everything in this directory and where we are right now. And then we put in root at uh, the domain peter.rest. And then I'm going to put in a colon and then the path where we want to paste it to. And for us, it's forward slash var forward slash dub 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 forward slash the name of your application, Peter. Uh, that's the that's the directory that we that we created when we were on the server. We did mkdir. Um, so that that's the path, right? And if we do that, I mean, hopefully, we copy that. All right, so it's copying all of the files. You should also copy the yeah yeah the side JS yeah that's that's good. These are these are all of the files transferred into uh, onto our server. This is the deployment really. Now, if we SSH into our server, so we're gonna SSH into root at peter rest or, you know, your domain. I'm sick of saying it. <laughs> now, if we CD into var dub 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 Peter, or your name of the application, uh, you're going to see that we have all of the files here. Good. Well, so what we're going to do here is um, we're going to run this application. We're going to run the, um, just just for testing, we're going to run it. So what we're going to do is we're going to say .NET, and we're going to do peter.dll, uh, which should run the DL. It might be .NET run Peter DLL, but I'm pretty sure .NET Peter DLL should be fine. Yeah, it is. And it tells us that it's uh, listening on localhost 5000. Now, the moment of fucking truth to know if we screwed up somewhere, peter.rest. And lo and behold, we have our ASP.NET website running and we have an HTTPS connection. However, this is not a good way of running it. Because obviously, it's just there and you can't exit. You would have to stop the application. When you st once you stop it con by control C, um, the website goes down. So what we need to do is we need to set it up as a uh, systemd service. 
So first of all, we're going to nano a new file, which is going to be an Etsy uh, systemd, systemd, um, system, and we're going to name it, uh, it needs to be whatever you give it a name dot service. And I'm going to call it just so I don't call everything Peter, because it would be a little confusing. I'm going to call it Peter Web. That's going to be the name of that service, uh, dot uh, service, right? Now, you're going to hit enter. It creates a new file. It is a new file. And we need to set up a couple of things. So first of all, let's uh, set up a unit um, in, in uh, square brackets. Underneath it, we're going to type in description and we're going to just come up with uh, whatever, like my for like my ASP.NET website, whatever. You could put in whatever description you want. Uh, next thing, we're going to add a service uh, section and in it, we're going to add a working directory, which is where the where the application will run from, which is in our case, var dub dub dub. Peter. Now the next thing is exec start, which is what should how we started. And if you remember, it was .NET and then the Peter DLL, but we need to give it full paths. Uh, so what we're gonna do? .NET is located in uh, USR um, bin uh, .NET, and then. Uh, the DLL is located in forward slash var dub 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 peter peter dot DLL. You need to, it's the same DLL that we ran just a couple of uh, seconds ago. Wait, seconds? Probably. Um, so make sure that it's the, the right, you know, DLL. We're going to set restart to tr to always. Uh, restart to always. So if the application crashes, it just restarts. Uh, restart sec is going to be 10. So when it crashes, it waits for 10 seconds and then restarts. Uh, the kill signal. Actually, I think it, no, 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 it tries to restart. And I think if it fails, it sends the kill signal. And the kill signal is just going to be uh, SIGINT, right? Like classic death signal. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're going to have a syslog identifier. Uh, it's just a thing that you can, like, it's your own label. I'm just going to call it, like, Dolphnet uh, Peter. I don't really care. Uh, it's just so we can search through, like, logs. If you go through a system log, it's going to say, hey, .NET Peter had this error message at this time. But it says, like, literally everything else about, you know, you know, all of the other logs in the system as well. So that's why you want to have an identifier there. Uh, you can filter by that. Um, the user that's going to run it, it's not going to be root. It's going to be dub 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 dash data. It's created, it was created by Nginx, that, this user. And we're going to have two environment uh, variables. One of them, environment. Uh, one of them is ASP.NET Core underscore environment uh, production. So it runs in uh, a production setting. And another environment variable is going to be dot net underscore print telemetry message. I'm going to set that to false because uh, .NET really likes to f threaten you with uh, telemetry messages, uh, but it's not desirable uh, when we're running this uh, application. So, and then also we need an, an install section with uh, wanted by multi-user target, which basically means, uh, oh, this this uh, service should only initialize after connection to the internet. Um, all right, so this is this is all we need to really do. Now we're gonna hit Control X, uh, Capital Y, Enter. All right, the service is is uh, ready. Now we need to start it, enable it. And Check the status. So first of all, system CPL start. That's Peter Web. It's gonna uh, no output is good. Uh, then we're gonna also do enable, which is going to start up the service. It's gonna create a sim link as well. And then the very last thing is system CTL status Peter Web, which is gonna show. We're gonna check out if it's running. It is running. Seems to be running. And in fact, if we go to that website. It really is running. You can see that there it is. Here it is. Uh, and at this point, we can actually exit from our website 
and there you go and the website is still running and you can send this to other people and in fact the next thing you should do is just go to um discuss and be like hey guys um i have this cool website i made using peter's tutorial and say something like that and at this point um only Drexus Deer is going to be public. It's not public yet. Uh, we're going to take your URL. We're going to check it out. And we're going to put it on the website board where only admins can post. So you can see it. You can see a list of other people's uh, websites. And now, now the thing is, like, maybe you want to have a little bit more flair. If that's, if you're familiar with everything else, this is fine. Uh, if you want to learn more about HTML, try uh, a couple of, I have like, uh, recommendations for, for example, W3 school. Um, this website, w3schools.com, and I would recommend HTML here. And uh, go through it. Go through this HTML introduction, editors, basic editors. You, you could skip probably because you already have Visual Studio. Basics, elements, attributes, that sort of a thing. Go through it. Find out as much as you as you want. Check it out. And um, here, let's just also demonstrate how you would update the website, right? So... Uh, let's say you add a uh, new new p tag here. It's gonna be like, and I can also update it, right? You could do this, right? And if you save it, at this point we can do the whole dance again, but it's not the entire thing. Now we know. Now we know how to how to do that. So first thing we we go into uh, the directory of the project again. Again, the same thing. It has startup and it has program CS. That's where we need to be. And we do the whole .NET uh, thing again. Let's actually search for publish. Uh, which one was that? Oh yeah, this one. So this command, you run it again, which was .NET publish C release R Linux self-contained false. After you do that, you again go CD into this directory. And again, you do SCP, this one. So SCP R uh, star root at whatever your username colon forward slash var dub 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 the name of that it's going to copy all of the files again now from like a newly updated and, and deployed thing and then you could and then the next step is to ssh into your server in this case um, uh, root at peter.rest and what we need to do is very simply system ctl restart uh peter web that's it you run that it restarts and we should hopefully see the changes now and there you go and i can also update it there you go and that's it that's how you do it and now you have an asp.net website it's running on your server um and that's it that's that's all and it costs us like the server so far cost us 0 0.02 dollars and um, and the domain cost us like less than $2. That's it. Um, I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you guys, I'm really looking forward to seeing your guys' uh, creations. And I'll see you in the next video where we're going to talk more about ASP.NET.